guys. We're here for another video. Uh, Mr. Bergman, delighted to see you again. We are awesome. Well, you're awesome. I don't know if I am. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. We're, we're surviving. <laughs> What are we going to talk about today? Bonding, chemical bonding. So it's the connections of atoms for each other. So tell me more. What, what is a chemical bond? Well, so remember last time we talked a little bit about um, how every atom wants to have a full outer shell of eight A, electrons. that's the octet. Yeah, so we're really concerned about valence electrons, the outermost electrons, because those are the ones that meet and greet with other atoms. So essentially, if you're an atom and I'm an atom, we're going to want to connect in some way. Okay. Your nucleus which is positive, is gonna to wanna to attract my negative electrons. So you're saying what happens is that the positive one wants to attract the negative of another. Opposites attract, remember ladies, whenever you wanna tell your dad that that's why you're dating the biker dude who's 30 with a mustache, <laughs> don't, don't do that. that. Don't do that. Um, that's, that is the reasoning why, that's where they get this expression. So a bond is a connection of one atom for another. Correct. And then the key players are the valence electrons, as we're saying. They really are. Outer shell electrons. Electrons on the outermost, and their goal is to get the eighth. That's really it. Now, if we were to do this pictorially, like this is the worst diagram ever. This is one atom, this is another atom. This atom and this atom want to connect with each other. All right, so it's like a, like a bond. Like you're holding hands with your boyfriend or with your girlfriend, right? Which you can't do because of COVID, right? Yes, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so this this is essentially the most most basic diagram of what a bond looks like. But there's three major types of bonds. You so, want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, what are the three types of bonds? Let's, let's fill out this chart that Mr. Dimitrovich is going to draw on the board here. What are the three main types of bonds? So we have three types of bonds, ionic, covalent, and metallic. Now, if you remember back to our study of the periodic table, we have different types of elements, metals and non-metals. And depending on what type of an element you have will depend on depend on which type of a bond you have. So an ionic bond is what, Mr. Dimitri? It's always between a metal and a non-metal. And the best way to think about that is if you take a look at your periodic table, there's a little darkened staircase. Anything that's to the upper right, we consider to be a non-metal. Anything to the lower left, we consider to be a metal. So if you take one from each of those, the only way they're going to be able to bond is with an ionic bond. And Mr. Dimitrovich, covalent, so we've got metal, non-metal here. Here we've got covalent. And folks, so that's a non-metal to a non-metal. Again, upper right of the stair steps, so like carbon with hydrogen. Hydrogen, remember, hydrogen's kind of weird. He's, he's actually upper left, but he's counted a non-metal. Or carbon with oxygen, or sulfur with oxygen, something like that. And then you might realize, metal, non-metal, non-metal, non-metal. We only have one of the choice, and it kind of makes sense. Metallic is? A metal with itself, really. And we say metal with metal. But one of the things we need to remember is if I take a piece of copper, let's say I have copper, Cu, it's not one single copper. There's trillions and trillions of these coppers and they're all smushed together. So whenever we talk about metallic bonding, it's really typically a metal with more of its own kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's the key thing to understand is we've got metal, non-metal, 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 and metal, metal. Now, what causes these to happen? They're actually different for different ones. So we're going to cut right now to another little clip that we did, the crazy hat video, uh, <laughs> about ionic bonds. We had way too much fun making these. Mr. Birdman. You look goofy, dude. Well, I went to the Hat Emporium, as one does. Yeah. And um, they said that this was the best hat. It's that the I could ugliest wear. hat I've ever seen. That's, <laughs> that's very hurtful to my feelings. Well, I'm just going to be and honest. And as a millennial. Truthful. I am a millennial, so. <laughs> <laughs> if only there was some way that this hat would be gone. You know what? I think I'm in, in the spirit of love, I'm going to take your hat from you. I feel great. In fact, I feel positive. I feel kind of negative. <laughs> negative. I feel as though we're modeling something here. <laughs> kind of a dopey way. Ionic bonds. How does that work, right? Well, that is an electron that electron. you just stole from me. I took it, or you gave it to me, depending right. on how you perspective. Mm -hmm. I took this electron from you. I feel negative. Those electrons are negatively charged. Yeah. And I lost a negative, so now I'm positive. But now here's the weird deal, because she's positive and I'm negative. We have to try, but well, it's yeah, COVID, it's right? It's COVID, so, so we can't do a full we went, air hug. Yeah, so air hug, right? Okay, that's an act bond. There we were stealing electrons from each other, sort of weird. Uh, now, what if, what if you can't steal? What are your other options? Yeah, I mean, let's say I want to take from you, but you're just as big and bad as I am, right? Yeah, I, I think we got a video to kind of explain that. Let's take a look. That is an attractive hat. I know. I feel really, really good about myself. By the way, yours is pretty awesome too. I, I was feeling unique and special. Now I see that you have one and I feel like 
I think the way to make myself feel better is I want to wear both hats. Oh, you want to take my hat? Yeah. No, I don't think so. How about if I take your hat? Dude, no way. So we're at an impasse. So what shall we do? Hmm. I Thinking vote cap. that we share. So in the spirit of friendship, friendship and, and good deeds. So let's say we both hold on to this, right? Don't we both have equal ownership of yeah, these now? Yeah, they're like our hats. So we both sort of have two hats. Yeah, and didn't we both just gain a hat? Yeah, so we now feel pretty, well, sort of We negative. aren't really wearing. It's really not a negative, positive thing. So guys, yes, you realize what we're talking about. We're talking about a different way for atoms to do stuff with electrons. Yeah. So in the last time, we talked about how you give and take electrons, but here we share electrons. Sharing with electrons is when nonmetals, like a carbon or something, bonds with a non-metal, say like an oxygen, and what they do is they share electrons and they're called a covalent bond. You know what's great right now? What? Is I own two of these. No, no, I own two of these. Hmm. Wait, wait, maybe we both own two of these. So what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine, but neither of us really own it, right? Yeah, this is what we call the toddler principle of ownership. Since toddler? we both, yeah, I have a toddler. Explain. I have a toddler. If a toddler holds on to something, it's theirs. So even though reality is, is that neither of us is giving up something, we both are claiming ownership of both, and that's how a covalent bond works. <laughs> I'm a toddler. <laughs> so right now we're sharing both these, and it's a way that but, we both gain electrons. There you go. So there, obviously, here with the covalent bonds, non-metal, non-metal, there's a sharing going on because we have sort of equal strength. Let's talk about strength in just a minute, but let's just briefly talk about metal, metal, and how they work. Honestly, folks, we're not going to talk too much about that. We have a kind of a whole longer unit on bonding, and in that longer unit, that's when we're going to go into more details about how this works. So that said, there is something about this strength. There's actually a term that we need to use. So when we're trying to, you know, steal hats from each other, um, there's a some atoms are stronger than others, right? And that term is what, Mr. D? It's really wordy. It's electronegativity. Electronegativity. Big word. Um, and when we're looking at this, you can essentially, if you want to do it in the baby steps version, we'll revisit this as you said later. It's how able you are to gain an electron. So if I'm really, really able to gain an electron, I have a very high electronegativity. If he really is not very able, he has a low electronegativity, and that's going to determine what type of bond. But what if we both really, really want to gain an electron? And they might have to share. We have to share. So I, I like to think of like the strongest one is like the, the rock, you know, the rock from the movie. He's super strong guy. He's the one who wants the electrons the most. He's very strong. Like fluorine, as it turns out, is the strongest. And then, then there's like the Pee Wee Herman version, the weakest one, which would be actually francium. And later on, we'll learn about how you can tell which has the highest electrotivity and the lowest. But th that's it, folks. That's the introduction to bonding. Hopefully, that gets you just a big idea of just the three kinds of bonds. Right on. We'll see you in class. Indeed.